contact Pure, I'm sure he can uh, refer you to different people. In North America, um, if you contact Steve Smith, uh, Tom DeFilius, they will probably can refer you to who's teaching and who's not. I'm not familiar. Um, I don't really follow or keep track of who's doing what, you know, I, I don't know. So that's it. But you want to be very careful about that because Jesse has passed away, and like all great martial artists, as soon as they pass away, everyone's claiming to do their stuff, even people with just a couple of seminars, right? And then they, they, you know. But you don't want to learn from someone that just did a few seminars. And what you want to do is find someone that's actually good, right? So we don't waste time and money, so. And uh, so yeah, contact these people. And I'm pretty sure Jesse's best student that he ever had was uh, Wolfgang. Could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure. So these are some people you can contact to find someone that's legitimate and not just another guy that, you know, kind of just did a few workshops and uh -huh. started using Jesse's name. And yeah. I'm pretty sure, that, I'm, I don't know, but I, but I see some stuff where it seems like it's happening, right? Because he passed yeah. away. But ah, let's not get into that because that's a real piss off. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, so moving on to the next question. Then. Next question. <laughs> yeah. You know how every time you film, a lot of people are saying you're so fast, you have the speed, you're awesome. You know, it's uh, all special effects. <laughs> it's an illusion. It's not real. It's all camera work and wires and That is so CGI. not true, guys. That's, That's so right. not true. Everything is real. No, man. CGI. Um, anyways, uh -huh. if I wanted to have the speed just like yours, uh -huh. relatively close to what you have, mm -hmm. how do I increase my speed? How do you increase your speed? Um, well, half of that is genetics, right? So some people are faster than others. I train a lot. My brother's quicker than me, and he doesn't train, right? I'm not sure if he's still quicker than me, but he used to be, anyways. And uh, so yeah, a lot of it is genetics, man. A lot of it is yeah, genetics. Yeah, that's about I would say 40 percent at least. Mm -hmm. And then the rest is training. There's a lot of stuff you can do. The first thing you want to do is uh, prepare your body. You want to be you want know, you want to have enough flexibility that you're not tight, right? Do a lot of deep tissue massage, a lot of somatic style stretching and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. And then uh, to carry yourself, good nutrition so your body's ready. And then you want to have a lot of explosiveness. So, you know, clean and jerk, um, power uh, jumps, mm -hmm. high pulls, all the Olympic lifts will make you explosive. But you need to transfer that explosiveness into sports specific. So you want to start practicing more short movements with a little bit of weights ankle weights, dumbbells, whatever. So that's all that is just to uh, prepare your body to do some work. Once you can do that, you move on to motor learning. By that I mean you're learning a movement, right? Mm -hmm. When you start learning a movement, it's very general. And that's what people talk about. Like you see on the internet, people say, okay, you don't want to throw a punch, you drop your shoulder, turn your waist, lunge with your legs, um, you know, drop your chest, sink down your chin, make sure you're twisting and snapping your shoulders into it. So people talk about stuff like that, but that's very general, right? Mm -hmm. So once you do a few thousand reps like that, you start having a feeling of how your body works, then you start making mini adjustments that will make you faster. Stuff like using gravity, add, adding delay circles in your movement, um, timing your body parts, non-telegraphing, and all this stuff. I can go on and on, but it's hard for me to talk about this without actually showing it on video and I can't because I'm driving. <laughs> so yeah, so you can get a good um, teacher that can teach you how to move faster by learning how to use your body better. But one warning is 
you can't really learn this from someone that can't move fast, right? Like a lot of times I see people go, hey man, buy my DVD for a special price uh, speed training. And you see the guy move, he can't move fast. So if you can't do it, you can't teach it, right? That's true. Okay. So you want to be careful. But yeah, you can get a lot faster. I'm quicker now uh, than I was in my 20s. So, so you can always get better, right? But you gotta train a lot though. That's, but another thing I wanna mention is speed is actually not that important. I know that sells on YouTube and people wanna chase that. I enjoy speed, but it's not that important. I mean, most conflict starts at close range, right? Mm -hmm. And at close range, you don't have to be fast. That's why even, like look at boxers, right? They're really smooth, they're amazing. They can slip punches, they can cover punches, they can scoop it, they can snap back, bob and weave, shoulder roll. So they can react to a fast moving fist coming at them. No problem, right? Amazing. But what happens at close range? They have to tie the guy up and clinch. They can't react to a punch at close range. Just like a professional baseball player. They can catch a ball that's 90 miles an hour from far, but as soon as it's close, they can't catch it. So. Once it's close, speed doesn't matter. Even a slow guy can hit a fast guy. I mean, uh, Bruce got hit by people much slower than him. Ali got hit by people much slower than him because in close range, right? And since most fights happen in close range, you don't need to be that quick. It's better to work on stuff you actually need like uh, accuracy, functional power, sensitivity, um, the right attitude, awareness, proper tactics and strategy, stuff like that. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, my third question will be... You're reading all my YouTube comments to find these questions, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah. doing it for the fans. Yeah, someone's got it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so the next question there was um, something to do with one getting old. When getting get, old, man. Yeah, when you, when you get old, Just you do get injuries. And sometimes because, injuries. you know, you're, you're old, you you're tend to heal longer. Like, it takes a longer process for you to heal. Oh, man, Logan. So that said, there are some people out there just like yourself where even though you're injured, you, yeah. know, you know, you want to train because this is something you love to do. I do it. I'm so, injured now and I'm still training, yeah. <laughs> to sum that up, my question is, what do you recommend or how do you actually train when you're injured? Depends on the injury. Um, one, of, one of the ones I get a lot, like people email me a lot, is that they're getting older. Like, oh, I'm 60, I'm 70. Um, how do I defend myself against someone that's young? And then in marketing, <laughs> martial arts, there's a lot of promises made, right? Like, it doesn't matter how old you are. If you learn this, you can protect yourself from against someone younger, faster, stronger, blah, blah. I get pretty skeptical and I get red flags. Basically, I don't trust marketing in anything. So, but it is possible, but I don't believe in any magic pills. It depends on a person. If you've been active your entire life and um, you've been training your entire life, then you can become a, you can stay a good martial artist well into your old age, right? Like I've seen guys in their 60s in their 60s, that can handle a guy in their 20s, no problem about trying, right? So that is possible. But if you get a guy that never trained before, and his bones are brittle, and he's got bad cardio, and he's got no strength in his tendons, and he has trouble walking, is it, if he's old and injured and never taken care of himself, and all of a sudden he wants to learn to protect himself, that's kind of like, I don't know. The first thing is you have to make a real assessment. Yeah, you're old, but. How old is your body? Like, can you get someone to take care of you? Rather, diet, um, your sleeping pattern, your stress level. Um, there's all sorts of things you can do for your health to develop yourself to the ultimate level for your age. Once you do that, like, uh, get a proper nutritionist, uh, get a proper personal trainer, uh, start doing yoga, start meditating, start doing cold showers, uh, start doing qigong. Do a lot of stretching per day, work on your cardio. So you're doing all this stuff. This will take a few years, right? And you develop yourself to the point that you go, you know what, I think I I gotta put a good hole on this and I, and I plateau, okay? Then you can make a realistic assessment at, okay, what can you do? But let's say you're 60 years old, but you've, you've done all this stuff. And you're in pretty good shape for your age. Now it makes sense to ask, okay, what can I do to realistically protect myself? 
But if you can't even sit up straight and you can't even cross the street without pain, then maybe that's not the first question you should ask, how to fight. <laughs> the first question you should ask is, how do I better my health, right? So assuming you have done that, now you, the second question, well, how do I defend myself? Well, you gotta think about your lifestyle. Okay, you're 60 years old, so you probably don't have a huge nightclub, late night life, right? So what kind of conflict are you really gonna get? At nighttime, you're probably at home a lot, so now we're talking about home invasion. That's nighttime. In daytime, who's really gonna jump you if you're like an old guy walking down the street? What street are we talking about? Are we talking about Canada? If we're talking about Canada, then yeah, old people do get attacked sometimes. And they usually get attacked not through ambush, luckily, because people get overconfident because you're old. So when they attack you, it's usually from a frontal confrontation type of thing. Like some young punk walks up to you and go, hey, you got any money? Give me some money, right? There's a motive in why people attack. So if it's just a robbery, give them the money. You don't have to fight. But if you get in a situation where you have to defend yourself and you're older, the good thing is they're going to underestimate you. Another good thing is they're going to get really close because they're underestimating you. So my recommendation, uh, you got to check with the law, depending on where you live, is learn how to use a weapon. If you got a cane, learn to use a cane. If you're comfortable with a knife, um, you can learn how to do that. What about exp like extendable baton and stuff like that? So you can, I, I would recommend an old guy to use a weapon. That's what I would do. Why not, right? Because why would you fight fair with the guy's 20 years old, 200 pounds? That's not a fair fight. And if you learn how to use a weapon right, properly, when you're old, you can easily beat the crap out of a young guy. No problem, right? But there's a lot of factors to go with that because mentally, can you really bring yourself to bomb someone in the head with a stick? A lot of people can because they're really good people. So you have to do a lot of thinking about how much you value your own life, what kind of force is necessary, can you bring yourself to do it? If the, que if the answer to all that is yes, then you gotta find a good teacher, right? And a lot of people teach sticks, a lot of people teach weapons, but being able to use it in a realistic scenario demands somebody to have a specialty, someone with some experience. And most people that do like scenario realistic reality based stuff, they have no respect for martial arts. And some, for a good reason, because a lot of the martial arts stuff is not really catered to or adjusted or adapted to a realistic scenario. So that's the good part. The bad part, the bad part about disrespecting martial art is most of the skills that I see that they're innovating are things that already exist in martial art, but probably done into a higher skill level. Right? So why don't they just combine it where you take the skills of martial art through the thousands of years of evolution and innovation and then tweak it and adapt it to a realistic scenario, right? Um, let's say you want to use a weapon. We're in a car right now. Let's say again to a road rage incident. Well, the first thing I should learn using this as an example is to shut my mouth and not drive aggressively and apologize <laughs> if I'm wrong and start getting into unnecessary conflict. Assuming, let's say, if this, the car ahead of us jammed me up and I can't go anywhere and I piss this guy off and I say, this guy's getting out of the car, okay. First assessment is, hey man, am I trapped in my car? Maybe I can just drive to the left, to the right. Does he have a weapon? Is that a gun? Should I run him over? Okay, no. Let's say that the answer is no, and I'm trapped in my car. There's a car to my left, to my right, in the back. I, I can't drive off, I have to get out. Do I stay sit, seated in the car when this guy's coming at me? Probably is a stupid thing to do, right? If I'm trapped inside my car and this guy attacks and he's, he's standing up and I'm sitting down, I'm at a huge disadvantage. So I should get out of my car and try to de-escalate. Okay, if I get out of my car, I should use my car as a barrier. I can run around my car when it comes at me if I could. Maybe I can talk him down, right? Okay, let's say I can't talk him down. So now we're in the next phase of the conflict. Does this guy have a weapon? Is his hand concealed? Is he reaching for anything? Do I have a weapon? Why don't I have a weapon? Okay, if I do have a weapon, how do I use it? How do I use it on a guy that's coming at me? He's just getting out of his car, he's pissed off, he's got a baseball bat, he's running right at me. Okay, I know all this martial art, how do I really deal with that? In about a tenth of a second, he's gonna attack. And when he does attack, he can probably cover from his car to mine within one second and swing from my head. What do you do with that? So these are some of the things of what I mean, like you can take martial art and adapt it to that. And you want to be very careful when you start looking into this stuff. Because 
There's just too much marketing. Everyone's going to tell you they're from ex-military, they're an ex-bouncer with a million fights and blah, blah, blah. Forget about all that. What can he do for you? What can he actually do when he's not cooperative? Does he have any skill? Is he kind to his students? Can he actually make someone older move well, well enough to be someone younger under a non-cooperative test? So these are some of the things you want to think about. It's not as easy as people think, right? So anyways, I'm babbling and I'm, I'm sorry, but it's just, I always think about this stuff. Right? So, yeah. All right. Um, shit, that's a lot, I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there you go. <laughs> that is your Adam Jones, uh, Adam Chan dose for the day. Adam Chan dose for the day. Yes. Holy shit. And hopefully you guys have more questions. Watch the videos, and I'll try to get Adam to answer them.